As we're working with Laplace transforms, it's important that we can go both directions. Find the Laplace transform of a function and find what we're going to call the inverse Laplace transform. And that's today's question. How do we find an inverse Laplace transform? And the basic answer is we're going to use our Laplace transform table backwards. So for example, I could be asked to find the inverse of a Laplace transform of 3 over s to the fourth. As I solve this, the first thing I think is, gee, I can take the inverse Laplace transform of the 3 can come out as a constant, and the 1 over s to the 4th is what I'm going to focus on as I look at my table. And if I look at my table, I see that the Laplace transform of t to the n is equal to n factorial over s to the n plus 1, which means the Laplace transform of t cubed is 3 factorial over s to the fourth. Well, that is almost what I have on this Laplace transform inverse. The only thing I'm missing is I need a 3 factorial in the numerator. So I can multiply by a 3 factorial in the numerator if I also divide by 3 factorial. But since it's a constant, I'm going to divide by it outside. And so we end up with 3 over 3 factorial is 6 times the inverse Laplace transform of 3 factorial over s to the fourth. 3 sixths reduces to 1 half. And we know that the inverse Laplace transform of 3 factorial over s to the fourth is t cubed. And now I have my inverse Laplace transform of 3 over s to the fourth. Let's try one that's a little bit more involved. How about we do the inverse Laplace transform of 7s minus 2 over s squared plus 9. Now we don't have anything that looks like this per se in my Laplace transform table, but what I can do is distribute this division onto both terms. When I do, I'm going to have an inverse Laplace transform. I'm going to pull the 7 out front of s over s squared plus 9. And then I'm going to subtract the 2, pulling the 2 out of the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 9. Now I go to my table and I'm thinking off to the side, gee, I know that the Laplace transform of the sine of a constant times time is equal to that constant divided by s squared plus the constant squared. Well, seeing that the constant squared is 9, that must mean that my constant is 3. So the Laplace transform of the sine of 3t then is 3 over s squared plus 9. And the Laplace transform of cosine of 3t we see as s over s squared plus 9. So my first term is all ready to go. We've got 7 times the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 9 we see as the cosine of 3t. Then on the second term, we're not quite there because we don't have the 3 in the numerator. But again, I can multiply by a 3 in the numerator and divide by 3 on my constant. And then I've got minus 2 thirds. And my inverse Laplace transform then is the exact form of the sine of 3t. And we found our inverse Laplace transform. Now, as we're working on these, sometimes it's helpful to be able to use partial fractions, just like we did in calculus, in order to help us solve these inverse Laplace transforms. And I want to recall 
just as a quick example, let's say we've got some function of s over, let's say one factor was s plus little a, we had an s plus little b squared, and we had an s squared plus ms plus n. If we were to split this up into its partial fractions, the linear factor just becomes some constant a over s plus a. The squared factor needs one factor for each power. Capital B over s plus little b plus c over s plus little b squared to account for both powers. And then finally, because we have an irreducible quadratic that can't be factored, that would be ds plus e, accounting for every power of s coming down over s squared plus ms plus n. And then we would work to solve for a, b, c, d, and e in this expression. So, if I'm being asked to find the inverse Laplace transform of s squared plus 1 over s cubed minus 2s squared minus 8s, I'm going to break that up using partial fractions. Um, first, I'm going to factor the denominator. Factoring out an s leaves behind s squared minus 2s minus 8. And so if I finish factoring, that denominator is going to be s times s squared, nope, s minus 4 times s plus 2. And the numerator is still s squared plus 1. We can break that up into three fractions by taking an a over s plus b over s minus 4 plus c over s plus 2. Now I just have to solve for a, b, and c, and then the inverse Laplace transform should come out quite nicely from there. We can clear the fractions by multiplying by the denominator, giving us s squared plus 1 equals a times an s minus 4 times an s plus 2 plus b times s times s plus 2, plus c times s times s minus 4. And what's nice about this equation is it works regardless of what s is equal to. So I'm going to pick convenient values for s to make two of my three terms on the right side disappear. For example, if s was 0, the left side, 0 squared plus 1 is 1, equals a times 0 minus 4 times 0 plus 2 is negative 8, so a is equal to negative 1 8. To solve for the b, I can let s equal 4. Because when s equals 4, the other two terms all go to 0. And so s squared plus 1, 16 plus 1 is 17, equals b times 4 times 6, which is 24, so b is the fraction 17 over 24. And to just deal with the c term, we would let s equal negative 2, which makes the other two factors go to 0, or the other two terms go to 0, leaving us with negative 2 squared is 4, plus 1 equals 5, equals 0 plus 0, plus c times negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12, and so c is 5 twelfths. Now I'm going to pull those constants out as we calculate our Laplace transform then. When I do that, pulling the a out front, we've got a negative 1 eighth, and we're doing the inverse Laplace transform then of 1 over s. Plus, pulling the b out front, we have 17 over 24 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 4. Plus, pulling the c out front, we have 5 twelfths times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2. Then I'm ready to look at my table to find my inverse Laplace transforms. And we'll see two important things on there. One thing that we're going to see 
is that the Laplace transform of 1 was equal to 1 over s. That's our first term. The other thing we'll see on there is that the Laplace transform of e to the s a t is equal to 1 over s minus a. So using these properties, we have negative 1 eighth times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is 1, plus 17 over 24 times e to the 4t, plus 5 over 12 times e to the, uh, to get the plus 2, it needs to be a negative exponent, so negative 2t. And this then becomes our inverse Laplace transform using partial fractions. Now multiplying by 1 doesn't really change it, so simplify by not showing the times 1. But let's try one that's a little bit more of an involved partial fraction problem. How about we try to find the inverse Laplace transform of s squared minus 2s over s to the fourth plus 7s squared plus 12. Well, if I try and factor that denominator, you'll see it's s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 3. And those being prime are not going to factor anymore. So we really have s squared minus 2s over s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 3 to split up into our partial fractions. Well, because we've got an s squared plus 4, that's an irreducible quadratic. We're going to do as plus b over the s squared plus 4, plus the other reducible quadratic, so cs plus d over our s squared plus 3. And then we can multiply by our common denominator to get s squared minus 2s equals as plus b times s squared plus 3 plus cs plus d times s squared plus 4. Now last time what we did, we were able to pick convenient values for s in order to simplify the expression down to one term. This time we're not going to be so lucky. So our other choice is to either pick values for s to create a system of equations, or just multiply everything out and set like coefficients together. All the coefficients of s cubed should be equal, the coefficients of s squared, s, and the constants. Let's go with that strategy. So if we're multiplying out, we have s squared minus 2s equals, multiplying out, we have as cubed plus bs squared plus 3as plus 3b plus cs cubed plus ds squared plus 4cs plus 4d. And now if I look at my cubes, there's no cubes on the left side, so we can say 0 is equal to a plus c. Then if I look at my squareds, I see there's 1s squared must be equal to a bs squared plus a ds squared. Then I can look at my s's. Notice those are a's and c's, so I'm going to line them up with the a's and c's. We have negative 2 s's on the left is equal to 3as plus 4cs. And then we can do the same thing with our constants, noticing there's no constants on the other side. So 0 equals 3b plus 4d. And this gives us a couple systems of equations to solve for a, b, and c, but they're pretty quick and easy to solve. The first one I can multiply by negative 3 to get 0 equals negative 3a minus 3c. And when we add them together, we see negative 2 is equal to c. And if a plus c is equal to 0, then a must be the opposite of c, which is a positive 2. Similarly, on the other one, I'm going to multiply by negative 3 again to get negative 3 equals negative 3b minus 3d. 
so negative 3 is equal to d. And if b plus 1 equals 1, b must be equal to 4 so that they'll add to 1. Now I'm ready to express my inverse Laplace transform. So we're trying to find the inverse Laplace transform of a 2s plus b 4 over s squared plus 4 plus our inverse Laplace transform of c, which is negative 2, s, plus d, which is a negative 3, all over s squared plus 3. Using much the same strategy we did before, we're going to take that s squared plus 4 and divide it onto both terms. Same with the s squared plus 3, divide it onto both terms. And as we do, we can pull out the constant. So we have 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 4, plus 4 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 4, minus 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 3, minus 3 times the, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 3. Now I have to remember or look at my Laplace transform table. We should see that the cosine of kt is equal to s over s squared plus k squared. That's going to cover my first and third terms. The other one I have to watch out for, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of work for it, is the sine of t is kt is equal to k over s squared plus k squared, which means the numerator needs to be the square root of that constant. So to get that constant that I want, in the second term, because we're doing s plus 4, the numerator needs to have the square root or a 2 in it. So we'll multiply by 2 and divide the constant out front by 2. Same with the last term. We need to multiply by the square root of 3. So we'll also divide by the square root of 3 on the constant. And then we have 2 times the cosine of k, which is the square root of 4, 2t plus 4 over 2 reduces to 2 of the sine of the square root of 4 is 2t minus 2 times this is going to now be the cosine of the square root of 3 times t minus if I rationalize that denominator you'll see multiplying by root 3 over root 3 is going to allow the 3's to divide out so we just have the square root of 3 as our coefficient times the sine of the square root of 3 times t and now we have found our inverse Laplace transform it takes a little bit of practice getting used to these especially with the partial fractions that might be required for some of these, but the best way to get good at them is to practice, practice, practice. So now it's your turn to go to the book and try some of these. Good luck, and we'll see you in our next video where we use these Laplace transforms and inverse Laplace transforms to finally solve differential equations.